Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily UPSC MCQ series, Mission 2020 we are taking here and I'm very sorry for yesterday because of uh, some health reasons. For the last two weeks I faced many problems and uh, I was inconsistent here. You were regular but uh, it was all my mistake and I'm extremely sorry for that. All the lessons will be uploaded uh, in this week. In 19th June it is and uh, let's start with the questions very important one current affair based questions with all the explanations uh, associated explanation we are taking here and these are important courses by uh, study iq for the next year's examination very much approachable affordable courses and you see many constraints are there and that is the thing that we uh, took care of here that all of you you can access there stay at your home uh, and uh, sit at your table and you just need a mobile phone or a computer here and uh, best guidance would be available you do, do not have to uh, waste your money and uh, you will understand everything crystal clear uh, and uh, uh, regarding the dedication of this channel you all know and there is no confusion about that so the description is given below the video the link is given and uh, these are the numbers that you can call and all the chat section and every help is available on the website there all the courses are available for the PDF, you can uh, send me a request on this Facebook group, I mean, uh, group for IS preparation, and I'm uploading all the PDF there. Telegram's link is also given. Question one: The Kaladan River rises in Mizoram and goes towards Bay of Bengal. First of all, Kaladan River, we have heard about it a lot because in the northeast area, for the uh, particular issue of access, getting access to the northeast and through the uh, Bay, of, Bay of Bengal region, Kaladan River is very very important. Situe is the port that is the most important one and that is the capital of uh, Rakhine state the western state of Myanmar also and Kaladan river that flows there but the issue is that it also flows in Mizoram state of India but it is not rising from there it is actually rising in the nearby area of uh, Myanmar that is the northwestern area of Chin state and there it rises and it goes towards uh, Mizoram and then again coming towards uh, the a lower state of Rakhine. The Rakhine state is the same state uh, uh, that was famous for the Rohingyas issue, actually infamous for the Rohingyas issue and a lot of violence we saw there. So it is not rising in Mizoram and it is certainly flowing there. It's flowing uh, with a different name and this is wrong. Second statement, it forms the international border between India and Bangladesh. No, it is actually forming the border between India and Myanmar, which is also called Burma uh, as the old name. So both are wrong here. Dinan is the answer. You can see Kaladan river. Uh, Kasapandi, Beno, Bavinu, Koloyande, any name they can give uh, give to it and uh, a river in the eastern Mizoram state of India, in Chin state and in Rakhine state of western Myanmar. Kaladan river is called the Chim Tuipui river in India. That is the most important, that important thing that you need to remember here because uh, uh, this river is giving the access there. So that is the case. And what is the problem? You see the map. If somebody wants to go there in northeast area then this area is attached to the Indian mainland just with this uh, chicken snack area and it, it is West Bengal uh, region and chicken snack very sensitive one if somebody uh, controls this area then we do not have any access uh, maybe we have to go through Bangladesh or we will have to approach Myanmar and then go towards northeast this is the only thing but uh, it's not very easy to get that access uh, internationally and Two times we need to cross the border here uh, if we go through Bangladesh and it is not an easy option. Integrated check posts are also there. Give me the name of, of all of these uh, check posts here on the Bangladesh border. And uh, that's not a simple thing. And again, you see, if we can get access here, if we can reach up to this Sitwe port and then uh, we can reach up to here. And these highways are created and this river, Kaladan river is giving this access. So this is Aizawal here and this is Zoringpui border and uh, Paletwa is the place in uh, Chin state and it is rising here in Chin state and uh, moving towards Mizoram. So Mizoram is the southernmost state in the northeastern states. You see this is Tripura and this is Mizoram and this is Mayan, uh, sorry, Manipur here and it is Myanmar country. So this is Sitwe port, it is, this is Rakhine state, Sitwe port and it is just 539 kilometers away from this mainland of India in the West Bengal, southern West Bengal region. So what can be better than that if we can get access here. So Kolkata here and the Haldia port on the Hooghly river and here it is Sitwe port. Just a straight access, the easiest area and no problem uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the borders or uh, any access to the uh, uh, roads and all, uh, highways and all, no problem. 
no bridges and all just a straight access so that's a easiest thing and uh, sitwe as i told you capital of the rakhine state and in the southwestern myanmar it is located at the mouth of kaladan river so kaladan river's mouth is here in this region okay so about kaladan projects it connects sitwe port in myanmar myanmar to the indian myanmar border and later a uh, uh, different uh, highway is going on so it was jointly initiated by india and myanmar both and we are very much thankful uh, to myanmar for this particular issue recently the operation sunrise happened and uh, jointly these countries they attacked some terror groups across the border there and uh, two three years back also indian troops they crossed the border of india myanmar uh, uh, boundary and uh, in myanmar they this uh, the, the destroyed some uh, important terror groups and their establishment there who were uh, getting trainings and all and they were very much active in the northeast area so uh, these things happened across the border because it is uh, certainly a disturbed border and in the past it used to be very very dis disturbed but uh, now many things are under control and our uh, troops they are consistently watching the area now you see when this operation sunrise happened recently then this mega kaladan river project that was under a lot of uh, threat and that's why uh, it was a highlight and you see it's a major issue it lowers the number of kilometers or reduce the distances from uh, uh, kolkata to sitwe by approximately 13 28 kilometers because if somebody would go uh, from this chicken snack area then additional 1300 kilometers they have to cross there so that's the case and uh, that is the main problem and this is very important next cry 1 abn cry 2 bc what are these these are not space telescopes these are not nuclear missiles these are not any ozone depleting newly discovered molecules these are actually genes cry 2 bc and cry uh, 1 ab you see us giant bears monsanto he uh, developed all these uh, uh, genetically modified seeds for bt cotton what is bt bacillus thuringiensis what is bacillus thuringiensis bt bacillus thuringiensis is actually a bacteria soil bacterium and from this bacterium we get a specific gene with the recombinant dna technology we can isolate that gene from that uh, bacteria and we edit that to the gene of uh, the cotton crop now what happened because of this uh, genetic engineering we actually saw that uh, uh, that property of that bacterium which was opposing the heliothis bulbum or the pink bulbum and whenever pink bulbum was attacked by these bacteria it got uh, attacked and uh, ultimately it died so the same property with this particular gene that came to the co cotton plant now it is no more vulnerable to the pink ball worm uh, pest and uh, it's actually uh, it is because of this cry one avian cry to bc proteins which are toxic to this pink ball worm so it's a great and automatic uh, uh, defense that is created and that is all because of biotechnology or the recombinant dna technology so this is the case of case of gm crop and the bioethics issue now you see we have changed the nature we have uh, somehow manipulated the genes so the earth goes on a certain ecosystem and everything is attached to some other uh, thing and uh, it is dependent it's a totally dependable ecosystem and everything is goes everything goes with the balance but now we have manipulated so it may have any consequence any major negative consequence and uh, this crop is very much important and you see the issue is that we if you are allowing this issue then it is the case of bioethics means ethics related to the nature so we should not change that we should not manipulate the nature but you see if we allow this then uh, maybe we will allow some uh, eatables also in the future like the bt brinjal and the dm mh mustard that case was going on the final clearance is not given to the bt brinjal and the uh, mustard but it is given for uh, this uh, genetically modified bt cotton and it is going on since 2002 many cases we have seen uh, first they had the major uh, uh, productions and all uh, then uh, later they found out that uh, not much production is remained after some years and uh, seeds they need to buy every time they cannot store that because it is all legally patented uh, issue and uh, because of that uh, and because of the same reason again some patent issues are there so when this uh, pepsico issue uh, with the the, the potato Uh, growers, uh, some uh, uh, the farmers in the Maharashtra state. So there, that was a famous case, infamous case actually. So because of that, this issue got highlighted, and it is the main issue of uh, patents. It is the main issue of uh, uh, bioethics and genetically modified crops. Okay. 
So that's the case. So D number would be the answer here, and uh, all the explanations given there. Genetically Engineering Appraisal Committee (GEAC) that is the main body that gives this clearances and it advises the minist uh, the ministry there, and ultimately the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change that decides about a crop that we should introduce that on the field or not. Okay. So they have not given uh, consent for BT, brinjal, and mustard. That's the case. Now the case of Lok Sabha Speaker. Recently we learned about the Pro Tem Speaker as I told you that was a temporary post and that just uh, administers the oath to MPs. Then these MPs they will elect their respective Lok Sabha Speaker and Deputy Speaker. And uh, that is uh, the simple majority with that they choose Lok Sabha Speaker and uh, the Deputy Speaker. But normally uh, because they enjoy the majority so from the ruling party Speaker always elected. And uh, Deputy Speaker by convention is from the uh, opposition party but you see the Lok Sabha speaker he has a lot of powers he decides the agenda of the house decides about the quorum decides about the business of the house some rulings on some convention so uh, many many powers are given there and uh, instead of all those powers and you see he decides he or she decides about the money bill that whether it is going to be the money bill or not and uh, many controversies were there regarding the Dhar bill and all so with all these contexts we have to talk about the powers and functions money bill uh, and uh, that's the case whether any bill would become a money bill that final decision would be of the speakers although it is not impossible to counter that but uh, that's very very a, a difficult process judicial review would be a very difficult thing and uh, uh, regarding the anti-defection law you see anti-defection law was not there in the original constitution that was added later and as a 10th schedule in 1985 and you see uh, they sorry in 1988 actually and it was the 85th uh, amendment actually so regarding that re regarding any defection means somebody is changing the party somebody is going against the parties then it is all the case of uh, dal badal uh, the famous word so it is uh, the case of anti defection so whether it is applied or not that would be decided ultimately by speaker and chairman in the case of Rajya Sabha. So that power is also given there and uh, sometimes uh, when there is a tie then the casting vote is also a provision. So with all the powers speaker should be a neutral body and uh, in UK's parliament where uh, we are following somehow the parliamentary system there the speaker that person leaves the party but in India that's a very very unfortunate thing that uh, that person does not leave the party and he stays uh, uh, with the party limits and all and uh, that is why all these confusions all these uh, uh, allegations they are there that the speaker as a as a as an important uh, body chair is not a neutral one these are the common allegations by the opposition parties always because uh, that person is from a ruling party and uh, in many many cases it looks like uh, they are uh, favoring a ruling party and uh, uh, they are giving more time to the speakers from the uh, uh, ruling party and all and uh, it's all somehow biased so these are the common allegations i'm talking about and as i told you original constitution uh, uh, gave this power to uh, president actually because uh, under the uh, uh, the uh, hand and seal actually uh, these uh, MPs they are executing their work and they are enjoying their status so the power is given to president by the constitution it was not given to speaker for the speaker regarding the anti-defection law the powers were given and uh, he or she decides about the anti-defection law implication so that was not in the original constitution so both are wrong statements here with respect to india both are wrong statements d would be the answer here and whatever i have told you this is all given here and uh, these are all the functions and the powers of the speaker and that's very very important opposed next libra libra is recently launched by facebook as uh, we discussed about it in the morning it is not any tool for checking fake information it is not any tool for uh, checking political views of individuals and it is not going to help any government or something like that and uh, for the financial frauds also there are multiple uh, other uh, important provisions but it is not uh, something like that libra is going to be the cryptocurrency the digital currency digital currency is based on uh, the blockchain technology where a center is there a public ledger is there all computers are connected with that uh, and uh, if somebody wants to manipulate that information which is there in the public ledger then that person needs to hack all the systems attached with that and they may be in numbers called millions or billions so it is not possible for any person to uh, simultaneously hack all the systems so that's why manipulation is not possible in the blockchain technology system and that is followed in the digital currency issue bitcoin was the first one and uh, sakoshi nakamura was the person who 
is said to be associated with the discovery of bitcoin but it is not sure so uh, some anonymous person that introduced it on the dark net and uh, for many illegal trades that was used so rbi also issued some direction regarding the cryptocurrency that uh, uh, no central government uh, in any country that uh, regulates uh, its uh, movement here so it is not trustable and please do not invest any money or any uh, thing re regarding uh, bitcoins can be very much a fraud so do not go behind that but uh, some countries uh, like some island country in the pacific ocean they introduce this uh, digital currency and that is based on blockchain technology issue so they may ask you about blockchain technology blockchain technology was recently used by coffee board of india also and in some marketing issues uh, they will use that so multiple applications can be there anywhere it can be applied so it is mainly for the digital currency because it makes it very much a secure one so it's a cryptocurrency and uh, facebook is calling it a global currency and for many payments it will use that calibra will be the digital wallet on the facebook website and uh, many members are there mastercard visa stripe kiva pay people lift all are important uh, members here and it is going, going to be called as libra that's important uh, based on blockchain technology next Justice BN Sri Krishna committee was made recently for you see committees are very much important and always they are asked it is not regarding NPA crisis it is not regarding the uh, related issue of uh, companies and trade balance sheet these issues are going on for four years now and they are trying consistently for many uh, resolutions but NPA crisis is not uh, totally manageable till now IBC came in uh, 2016 but not much help is there although it is only a workable issue till now but the complete solution is not there but this BN Sri Krishna committee was not regarding that. It is regarding data, data localization. You see, the servers of the YouTube, Google, uh, Gmail, everything uh, it is uh, uh, established outside India. They are uh, normally in America and uh, in Western states of America, they are mainly established. And it is the very controversial issue of internet governance. Because you see, these things are not stored physically in our hard disk or something like that. We are uh, we are actually accessing them virtually. We have our accounts accounts there. We have all sensitive informations there, but uh, these servers are not there in India. So we need servers and the centers so that we can regulate them. We can control them uh, in our way. But it will make this thing very much uh, a national phenomena. Today, internet is a global phenomena, but that may limit it to national boundaries but that is very much required also because because many issues we face many frauds many uh, uh, these uh, malware uh, ransomware all these issues many fake news issues and they are troubling consistently to the governments and to the people so if that governance if that law if that particular control is there within the physical boundary of a country then it would be very much manageable a situation so that is the reason that we are demanding that and even rbi uh, went for some uh, recommendations and bn sri krishna committee uh, gave its expert opinion cloud policy panel came regarding that and uh, uh, they all uh, went for storing the data locally so it is the case of data localization and sri krishna committee wants to localize data for law enforcement agencies to have easy access to the data for the criminals uh, information and all these issues uh, it would be very much a helpful situation but it has all its own negative consequences also as i told you that today it is a global phenomena that uh, can be disturbed because all the countries would go for this data localization issue and that would make it very much a limited uh, issue in a sense and we discussed about that in the rbi recommendation we discussed about that in the draft national digital communication policy also and even the telecom service companies they are also not allowed to uh, give any kind of information outside india so it's all the case of management and the control of that bond challenge you see this challenge was introduced in 2011 bond is the city in germany so government of germany with iucn introduced that and it was the uh, challenge accepting the challenge and uh, taking pledge regarding the degraded land restoration so it was the issue of c land restoration c would be the answer here and uh, these countries uh, went for that even india make a pledge in uh, cob 21 in 2015 in paris uh, summit uh, where we announced many uh, contributions from our side indcs were also submitted there and we also took this bone challenge and you see now the news is that india is first country of all the bond challenge countries to develop progress report so we will be accountable here and we will present our own report so it's a joint publication of the government of india and the ministry of environment forest and the iucn so iucn is uh, associated here and when it, it was introduced it was the government of germany and iucn in bond city that's why that's why we call it the bond challenge and that's very very important and all countries including pakistan china rwanda they have taken pledge there and one sub-national pledge 
first subnational pledge from Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region of Pakistan. That is the fully implemented one till now. No other pledge is fully implemented, but India is gonna develop its own report regarding that. So that's important. And uh, maintaining this uh, balance through uh, forestation and uh, plantation and uh, reversing this land degradation issue, we are gonna follow the FLR uh, technique, the forest landscape restoration issue. And the bone challenge is the actual challenge associated with that. So we will follow the FLR issue and our target is one of the largest in Asia. So it is all the case of implementation vehicle for national priorities and we are taking it voluntarily, not under any kind of pressure or mandate. We are, we are taking it uh, voluntarily here. So it's a great step by India. And uh, when it was started, the target was for 2020. Now it is the target for 2030 with the sustainable development goals issue. So it is not just the plantation issue, it is all restoring the ecological integrity and making the life better for humans in the future. So this is the case of FLR, functionality and enhancing human well-being. Next one health concept, you see recently we discussed about that uh, uh, regarding the CIE or the World Organization of Animal Health. What is the one health concept? They say that uh, we have been living here with animals uh, for thousands of uh, years now. It's not a new concept. Although it is aggravated issue uh, because of the climate change and the zoonotic disease. What are the zoonotic diseases? I told you some disease which are uh, spread from animals to humans or humans to animals. So these diseases they are uh, spread from each other. And normally what happens if the disease is happening to me, it will not affect uh, uh, any animal uh, by the side of me because uh, these are very much uh, uh, species specific. But some disease like bird flu, rabies, swine flu, and uh, even the HIV that came from uh, monkeys, chiasonal forest disease, these all are spreading from animals to humans. So these are great challenges. And every year we are finding new and new uh, disease like we found Ebola and that was a challenging one. And sometimes they are very much fatal. In 2009, in 2009 year, it was a great swine flu uh, outbreak in India and many people lost their lives. So it is all the case of zoonotic disease. So these kind of pathogens, they may be bacteria, they may be virus, they may be any protozoa, fungi, anything. They can be used as bioterrorist uh, weapons also, bio weapons also. And you see it was found that uh, many of the infectious diseases, 60% of them, they are zoonotic. So it's not a new concept and uh, it is not regarding any single treatment for animals and humans. Both are wrong. d is the answer and the explanation is given here. Okay. You can read that in the PDF and thanks a lot. I'm ending the lesson now. We will come again uh, with many other questions and important details of them. Thanks a lot. Keep watching to some exciting.